All right, so welcome to the third video in the uh, beginner climber gear recommendation series that we got here. So uh, this is going to be aimed at someone who is looking to get into uh, tree work as a climbing arborist doing removals, pruning, things like that. But uh, this is going to be, in this video, this is going to be the most economic, cheapest setup that I can think of. Uh, and also I'm supplementing it with uh, gear that I have. So I have most of it, but there's some stuff that I don't have that I will mention. And uh, both of the systems, either in this when I'm talking about uh, uh, gear recommendations and when I do the ideal tree worker gear recommendations for a beginner, uh, both of these systems are going to be based around double rope systems because that's kind of like the original way to be climbing with uh, tree work as a climbing arborist and such. So it's really important to understand how to climb double rope before you get into fun things like SRT and uh, different uh, fixed rope techniques. So first you gotta learn the basis of double rope climbing. So here I will have the economic setup for getting into double rope climbing and then in the next video I'll be doing what my ideal setup would be for getting into double rope climbing. So yeah, let's get into it. Uh, the first thing, most important thing if you're just getting into tree work is to buy yourself a hard hat so you can be safe to protect your head. Now, uh, ideally you would go for something like a uh, climbing hard hat, something that's made to be used at height. Uh, having a visor is nice, would definitely recommend that if you're not, well, yeah, for anybody. And yeah, so, but these can be pretty expensive, usually anywhere from like 70 all the way up to like $300 for a climbing hard hat. But uh, you could just use regular hard hats, like a $40, $20 hard hat that's not made for climbing. But you know, just be aware that if it's not strapped on your head, it could fall off when you're working at height. And say if you were to take a fall or a tumble or something, like if something just strikes you in the head, a hard hat's probably gonna work. But if you like flip over and run into something, that's where a hard hat's probably not gonna protect you and it would be more ideal to have a uh, climbing hard hat. So that is the first piece I'm gonna talk about. And then the next thing after a hard hat is it's going to be a good idea to get a saddle. So I, I'm just using my tree motion as the climbing saddle, even though this is, this is the tree motion S light. So it's the cheapest tree motion you can get, but the tree motions are not cheap saddles really. So this is still probably going to run you like $300 or more, but I'll, I'll have a couple, uh, recommendations that I'll put up on the screen for good economic uh, climbing saddles when you're first getting into it. And uh, there's pretty much two different types of cheap saddles. There's um, either you have kind of the seat ones where instead of having individual leg loops you just have a strap that runs across your backside to support your legs like a swing seat and you have again individual legs and then you also either have 4D saddles which are just kind of a split system where two D-rings come together to form your suspension point and the term 4D comes from the your you have two side D's for your buck strap and then you have your two uh, uh, D's that come across to uh, form your main suspension point and then you also have a, uh, a moving bridge saddle which is what this is where you have this one connection point on a bridge that allows you to move back and forth very easily. And here is my breakdown of why you would choose one over the other. Uh, 4D saddles are really easy to get into. They put on super fast. 
So I'd recommend something like that if you're only going to be doing like removals where you're mostly just going to be on your buck strap the whole time. So if you're if you're doing a lot of pines, a lot of spruce trees, just a lot of big straight up and down timber trees, something like a 4D saddle is actually going to be pretty nice because you don't have to step through the bridge or anything. You just put it on like a belt and you're good to go. And also that uh, the 4D saddles are the most common ones to have kind of that straight across swing seat uh, to support your legs. And um, those are not super comfortable when you're sitting in them for a long time. So yeah, I would only really recommend a saddle that has kind of that straight across back for like, uh, yeah, pretty much if you're only doing spar work the whole time, you're just gonna be climbing something straight up and down like a, yeah, like a spruce tree, any kind of conifer, things like that. And yeah, so that's the saddle. Now, the most important thing other than the saddle is going to be your rope. And if you're just getting into this, and in this cheap system kind of setup I have, uh, we're just going to be doing, uh, there's not going to be any extra hitch cords or anything. It's just going to be tying on a Blake's hitch to the climbing rope. You're going to want to get a 13 millimeter uh, either 16 strand or 12 strand climbing rope. The 12 strand is going to be a lot softer and the 16 strand is going to be a little bit firmer. At least that's been my experience with the Samson ropes. Uh, sometimes they have, they do have an economic version of their 12 strand. So you got uh, True Blue, which is a little bit spendier, and then you have uh, uh, whatever that other one is, the white one. And that one's quite a bit cheaper, and you can get your hands on that, yeah, pretty inexpensively. Also, because the 12 strand's a little bit softer, the knots will grab a little bit better when you're tying a Blake's hitch. But I like my Samson uh, Arbor Master. This is just a 16 strand one, and it works pretty well, pretty durable. And so this is a great uh, starter rope. And yeah, I think the 16 strands just a little, yeah, a little bit more durable. So this was a 120 foot length. Now it's probably about 100 feet long. And what I did is I cut off a piece of this rope to use as a buck strap. So in this initial setup that I have here, uh, based on the way I've tied the buck strap onto the side D, which I'll show you how to do that. Uh, I'm only using one carabiner just for the end of my buck strap. You know, it's always nice to have more than one. You'll definitely find uh, nice ways to use them. But in this thing, I'm only going with one double locking carabiner. If you're doing at height work, you're going to want to go with ANSI rated double locking ones instead of like uh, rock climbing screw gate carabiners. But yeah, you can get away with just buying one rope and then using that rope as your buck strap and as your climbing line. So that's about it. The rope accessory I'll talk about is uh, if you're going to be doing any pruning, uh, you're probably going to want to pick up a cambium saver. My favorite ones to use are just these leather sheath ones. They're probably the easiest style of cambium saver to use, but just to protect the tree that you're climbing from the rope running over it. And also it'll make your rope wear a little bit better too, a little bit nicer. So yeah, if you're going to be pruning, pick up a cambium saver to protect the trees you're climbing. If you're doing removals, you can just beat on your rope for a while. But the other thing is, if you're just going to be starting out and doing removals, it's a good idea to have a throw line so that you don't need to climb a tree every time you want to put a rope in it to pull it down. But if you're starting with removals, you're not going to find yourself throwing into a tree to climb into it all that much you're pretty much just going to climb up there with spurs and then set your line for whatever you need to do. Having a throw line is gr definitely a great tool to have in your truck to yeah, set up for pulling down big trees or yeah, other things like that, especially if you're doing sky hooking, yeah, pulling other trees over, I don't know. But the last piece of equipment that's going to be important if you're doing removals 
is going to be spurs. Now, I don't have either pair of my spurs with me today. They're in the bucket truck that I work with. But uh, if you're working for a company, they'll pretty much supply all of this stuff that I've talked about. But uh, if you're buying them on your own, then, you know, especially if you're only going to be doing removals, if you're pretty much only working in, like, pine, spruce, things that are uh, straight up and down, popples even are pretty straight up and down usually, uh, then you're going to want to invest maybe a little bit more in your spurs than you will in the other equipment because uh, having a good set of spurs when you're doing long removals are just is huge. They're having your feet be comfortable is just uh, fantastic. You want to go for the best spurs that you can afford usually. So my spurs that I bought for myself I just found like cheap on eBay. I think it was on like an online thrift store or something and they were just some steel Buckingham spurs with uh, just the leather pads. They're just those standard L style pads and those don't have any reinforcement on the inside. They're just leather pads between you and the shank of the gaff. And that, it, it's pretty uncomfortable. I've worn them many times. I've used them a bunch, but they are uncomfortable. And that's like as low as you can go. It's, it's pretty unusual to find spurs for just like 70 bucks, like I did. But, you know, browse eBay, maybe you can find something. But the spurs that I use at work that I'm hugely in love with are, uh, I've used the geckos, we have those at work too, but uh, I don't know, uh, maybe it's just because I wasn't allowed to adjust them for myself because I was borrowing another climber spurs, but my, the other spurs that I was given were a pair of Bashlin spurs, and I've adjusted those to fit my leg perfectly, and they just work so great. They're fantastic. I love my Bashlin spurs. The only other thing I need to change now is just get a boot with a stiffer shank to make myself a little bit more comfortable. Because otherwise those spurs are just perfect. I'm a huge fan of them. They're uh, the Velcro style ones. But having something that has a pad with reinforcement is super important. You can even get just like those standard L style pads, but with a steel insert to give you some more form to it. Now, I don't know how comfortable that is. I've never tried it. But probably the most common uh, pads that I see people using that they're a huge fan of, and they're pretty inexpensive, are those cast aluminum pads. Those uh, standard OG uh, uh, Cadillac pads. And I almost bought a pair for myself, and then my employer gave me those Bashlands, so I didn't, I didn't need to get those Cadillac pads. But uh, those are, that is probably the most comfortable thing to do is to get some good reinforced pads so that they hold your uh, calf properly so that your shin's just shin and the, your instep isn't just getting torn up by the spurs so yeah would definitely recommend if you're going to be climbing straight up and down on spurs a lot invest some money in those spurs because it sucks to be uncomfortable in spurs that's one of the biggest skills that you want to improve as soon as you start climbing is get good at using your spurs and that's so much easier if you have a pair of spurs that's comfortable to wear. All right, now that we've talked about that, let's go climb a tree. I will not be climbing in spurs just because I'm climbing just trees that are out in parks. So I'm not going to damage a tree. You know, don't be spiking up a tree that you don't intend to cut down. So that's, that's what rope access is for. When you're pruning, do not ever use spikes. Spikes are only for removing trees. So, yeah, keep that in mind, be nice to trees, and let's go climb a tree. Alright, so let's say that I want to climb this tree here for uh, probably pruning purposes. So I'm not going to be climbing with spurs, I have to ascend up into this tree without doing any damage to it. So I'm going to be ascending on a rope. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my drill line out and probably throw over one of these branches that are kind of down here a little bit. And then once I get one of those branches, I'll climb up to it and then use my buckstrap to advance up to wherever I need to be in that tree. 
But yeah, let's uh, let's get up to one of those branches and throw up there. So I don't know if you can see, but I have my throw line over this bigger branch that goes off to the left there. However, I need to isolate just that one branch. Right now I kind of have this scraggly thing in there with me too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and pull on the end of the throw line that's on the ground over there so that I can pull up another weight. I'll get this orange weight here just so that it'll pass up and over those other branches and both ends will come down to the ground. That is one of the slower things about doubled rope. If you're using double rope technique to get into a tree is that uh, you do have to make sure you're getting just one branch. It's kind of hard to ascend doubled rope over a collection of branches like what's happening here. It's passing over all kinds of stuff. So you got to get it so that your rope's just around one branch. So I could have just taken the throw line off this end and put it on that end, but since I got a bunch of throw weights, I'm just going to do it like this because it's a little bit quicker. It's always good to have extra throw weights. So pull this other end up and then so now it's just around these two branches. Once it's cleared that last branch, then I'll just let it drop down. So now we're just going over only that one branch. And now I'm going to be able to pull up my climbing line. So I'll take my throw weight off. <laughs> All right, feed my rope in there. Just girth hitch it on nice and tight. And I'll just pull that up and over the branch. All right, so now that I got my climbing rope up in the tree, I'm ready to put this throw line away and get all suited up to start ascending this tree. All right, so one thing I forgot to do was to uh, install my uh, cambium saver, which kind of sucks. So I'll show you how I do that from the ground. It would have been better if I already had this on the rope. I wouldn't have to do as much nagling as I'm doing right now. But what I'm going to do is just tie just kind of a sheep's bend or whatever you call this huge open bowling thing. Uh, just tie a knot. Tie a knot here so it doesn't come undone. But now this, uh, this knot will butt up against that... Uh, Goodness, I'll take up. This knot will butt up against the leather cambium saver when it gets that branch. So I see the leather cambium saver is not going over. Now the knot hits. And you just kind of... There. Now the leather cambium saver is installed. So we can just pull down this end. Now ideally you would throw a trucker's hitch on instead of a open bowl and thing like I did because what you can do is as soon as the trucker's hitch hits the cameo saver and pushes it over the edge then you can just pull on uh, the opposite direction and then the trucker's hitch will pop out you know so if I had a trucker's hitch like this on there it would go up run into the leather cameo saver push it over the branch and then once it's in position I just pull on this end and it unties and I don't have to pull that knot all the way back down to untie it so there we go. Now we got everything ready. Cambium savers up there, ropes installed. Now I'll throw on the harness and show you some stuff. So, it's always good to have plenty of carabiners, but on this climb and with this system, I'm just going to use essentially one. It's just going to be the carabiner on my buckstrap. 
the one that's going coming off and on going around the tree the most when I'm working so to do this this will be the end of the buck strap that gets thrown around the tree and then clipped back onto me so I'm gonna make the adjustable end over here so what I'll do is I will uh, make sure you can see that I'll tie a clove hitch onto my side D so I'll pull plenty through because I'm gonna need plenty of rope just tie a clove hitch on there see clove hitch tighten it up and then I'm gonna tie a, a Blake's hitch with this tail end of the rope around this end of the rope you just gotta make sure to leave yourself plenty of slack so that you can uh, tie the backup knot on the Blake's hitch so got my four wraps pass it through the bottom two and I'm gonna take out as much slack as I can tighten that up nicely throw my backup knot in there so that the Blake's hitch can't roll out and then voila you have I'll tighten this clove hitch up as much as I can too but now this is a pretty easily adjustable buck strap you got this Blake hitch that's your adjustable part and then you can just throw this around the tree and then clip in boom you got you got your buck strap now this one's pretty short you would ideally use more rope but yeah this is my buck strap that I'll be using and now I just got to get tied on with the Blake's hitch. So uh, once again, since I'm not using another carabiner, just the ring, I'm going to pull a lot of slack through because I got plenty to work with on this climbing line. And then I'm going to tie a, another clove hitch. Boom, another clove hitch. And now I will tie a Blake's hitch on this end of the rope. One, two, three, four. Now this rope's been used a lot in static systems, so it's not the most supple anymore. So I'm hoping that it still ties nicely into a Blake hitch, which it might not. You can get this to be a lot more grippy if you use a, a 12 strand rope because they're a little bit softer than this uh, 16 strand rope. But there, now we got our Blake's hitch that we can push up the rope and sit back in and it'll hold us. And then you have two ways to ascend. The most uh, standard hip thrust method is to pull down and then push the Blake's hitch up. I find that to be a little bit, uh, I don't know, it's all, it's all right. Actually, what I'm gonna do is uh, pry your biggest friend when you're climbing like this is uh, some good sticky gloves, which I did happen to bring a pair. Some solid latex nitro gloves. Pretty cheap. They, you know, kind of wear out pretty quick. I like to, and I can climb with rubber gloves, but these are just super nice for when you're climbing like this. And if you want to relax a little bit more on the way up, then the way to go is to make a mini uh, foot lock. The way you do that is you take the rope and you roll it away from yourself so that this crossover going down is crossing on the side towards you. And then put your foot through the hole and then when you point your foot down, it should lock off against your instep. And then if you point your foot up and let it come up, if there's enough rope weight, it'll tend itself. But yeah, point your toe down, 
push the knot up. There. That's way more relaxing for me. See, now it's tending itself. So you can just keep pointing your toe up and then climbing up. Oops, caught my glove. It's one downside to these gloves, they get caught and friction hitches pretty well. I should probably buckle my helmet. But yeah, I'll meet you at the top. All right, so now I'm at my tying point. So I will take my buck strap, and I'm gonna have to pull myself up to get this somewhere nice. Put it around the trunk of the tree and clip myself back in. And then, you know, pull it as tight as I want it to be. And there, I'm safe on my buck strap. Now, one thing about climbing this way is that uh, something that can make this a little easier and faster for now advancing my climbing line would be to have this Blake's hitch be on a what a split tail or just having a separate short length of rope that's used to tie the Blake's hitch because now I have to take all of this off to advance the line where if instead this was a separate piece of rope and this just came down on a carabiner and connected to my eye then I would just have to unclip that carabiner pay out some slack here and throw it around my next branch but now instead this way I have to untie everything and then retie all of it again it's important to do when you're untying all that stuff is to tie the rope to yourself first so that if I were to drop it I wouldn't lose all of my rope and then have to have someone help me get out of the tree so I have it just tied off to my side D here so that I don't lose any of my stuff now I'll just climb up a little bit higher, maybe say right there, and put my climbing line on that branch, and then I'll just descend again to the ground. You know, go all the way to the top if you're pruning or whatever. Give yourself the highest angle to work with. But, yeah. All right, so now I'm here. So I'm gonna set up my rope on here so that I can uh, descend safely. But yeah, it'll be a little bit slow if you're doing it like this. It's better to do that split tail system I was talking about for advancing your line and such, but this 100% works. I mean, it works for me right now. So yeah, good cheap way to uh, climb with basically only one rope. It's just cut in one spot so yeah super sweet this is yeah this is a fun climb I usually it's kind of empowering to climb with no hardware really except for one carabiner I guess this is pretty fun but yeah would recommend yeah using one more carabiner and having a split tail tied on to your ring but yeah this works Super cheap, great way to get into it. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get this climbing system set up. Get this over here. Untie this knot. So, to make this a little bit easier, I'm gonna initially tie this tail really short in the clove hitch, and then I'll pull a lot of extra slack through. There we go. Now time to tie the Blake's hitch.
have my safety tied in. If you're using a taut line or a Blake's, I always tie safety on the end of your line because they do have a tendency to roll out. All right, set up, so I'll sit down into my climbing line. Beautiful, untie that knot, and then untie the knot I was using to keep it on my harness. All righty, and then let's go down. I'll go down this side, I think. Now I gotta pull all my rope through so that I make it to the ground. Alrighty, down we go. Some foot pruning. Ooh. Yeah, let's go down. We're here. Alrighty, now to, oops, retrieve this, just going to set all my rope over here to make sure I get that leather cambium saver back. What I'm going to do is just untie everything and then I'll just tie an overhand knot in the end of the rope and that'll catch on the leather cambium saver and pull it down to the ground so I get everything back, all my equipment back. So yeah, if I were to just cut this rope here, then I could leave the Blake's hitch tied on here and then I could either keep bringing this down to the ring and tying it on or tie it onto a carabiner and just be clipping and unclipping the carabiner from this ring. But if you're going to do that, don't use a clove hitch. Use something more safe like a scaffold knot or something to tie it onto the ring. Or another carabiner, however you want to attach it to that. But yeah. Take all this off. And then just tie an overhand knot. And pull this up, and I'll just grab that leather cameo saver, and down it goes. Now, ring savers are a little bit more high tech, but I just love leather cameo savers. They're so much easier to put in and take out, and I think they're a little bit cheaper. But yeah, sleeve style savers, just, I'm such a huge fan. Love, love how they work. But yeah. That was that. That was a nice uh, economical way to get into uh, tree work, climbing arborist work. And I hope you thought that this video was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions on uh, alternative gear or other uh, cheap gear systems. But uh, yeah, you can definitely just get a saddle, helmet, cambium saver, one rope, and some spurs. And other than the saws, you're pretty much good to go with just that. Uh, and yeah, a couple carabiners. You really don't need that many, even a rope snap, something like that. They're all great options. But yeah, another another fun climb. Uh, wish I was doing tree work right now, but you know, it's that time of the year. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, please leave a like if it was helpful at all and uh yeah i'll see you in the next video where i do my uh more ideal double rope system for uh climbing arborist work but yeah cheers see ya